Alrighty, I have been gone for a while. I'm sure some of you were wondering if it was because of the new law passed by Congress, uh, which criminalizes uh, speech critical of Israel. In truth, I, it was not entirely because I was afraid of facing criminal persecution here in the United States for speaking ill of our greatest ally. Um, as the law has not been signed yet by President Biden, I almost said President Obama. Uh, but no, I, I have just been up to other things, so I, I don't want there to be any uh, conspiracy theories in the comments. <laughs> this is a conspiracy-free channel, because here on YouTube, uh, we trust the science and only, uh, and only use verified sources like Wikipedia... Um, which I'm sure will appear below this video. I'll say one of the trigger words that makes a Wikipedia fact check uh, appear below the video. And I thank YouTube for that because we would not want anyone getting the wrong idea and thinking that perhaps um, the Israeli side is not 100% double plus good. You know, it is, it is pretty funny. I, don't, I, I wonder when it will sink in for the Christian Zionists that... Congress has, you know, some people are saying, you know, like Tucker said, they just outlawed the New Testament. And while that is a, uh, that is a fair characterization, the way that this law could now be used uh, is not just to, let's say, ban the Bible, Okay. It will be used much more selectively and perniciously to charge people uh, for proselytizing the Christian faith as a hate crime. And, of course, this will not be done, you know, let's say to uh, Episcopalian churches or something like that. It will be done uh, to enemies of the regime. This is now an arrow that the state has in its quiver that it can pull out at any time to strike down almost anyone on the right for any reason. Um, because while everyone, you know, is, let's say, guilty under this law, if they are a, a Christian in any form, uh, because <clears throat> as many people pointed out, uh, the words in the Bible are pretty clear that it was uh, people... <laughs> who were Jewish, uh, that were largely responsible uh, for Jesus' execution. And that, I, I guess I, 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 I just sort of glossed over that. Under this new law, that is a part of the legal definition of anti-Semitism as to be incorporated under the Civil Rights Act. And so um, spreading the word of the Bible, which the Bible is now legally anti-Semitic, it is a hate crime um, to... Uh, to spread the word of God as Christians see it. And so through selective prosecution, they will be able to prosecute people as such um, for these transgressions. But in reality, they will be doing it for other reasons. It, you know, they're, they're not going to just try and throw every single person who goes to church in prison. That would be counterproductive. If everyone's in prison, uh, nobody might as well be in prison. Um, what this is, is it creates a vulnerability. Think of it like um, how they plant CP on people's computers when they want to take them down. A lot of the times when you see someone, um, you know, who is some kind of, you know, distant or whatever, or someone that the regime doesn't like, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, uh, the FBI raided their house and happened to find CP on their hard drive. It's like, no, that was probably planted there by the NSA or somebody, and then, uh, you know, because the FBI wanted to take them down, and so this is, you know, this is like the cover for getting them out of the way. This is their excuse. Now they have a new excuse. They don't need to plant CP on their computer anymore. They just have to find that you were, um, uh, that you were promoting the New Testament, and that is a hate crime uh, under which you could be sentenced to prison. And so this is just one of the many awful implications of this new law. Um, the most obvious one is that you're not allowed to criticize Israel in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you can't apply double standards, which anything – they Israel says everything is a double standard you know, because they're always the victim. They're always so oppressed. Uh, I mean one of the things is you're not allowed to compare Israel uh, to Nazi Germany. 
Uh, now, they didn't specifically in the definition that they provided, which this could be amended later as I'll get it into. Um, they did not mention uh, South Africa, I don't believe. So I think you are still allowed to call Israel an apartheid state. You just can't compare them to uh, the Nazis because, of course, uh, that would be uh, anti-Semitic. You also can't call Israel racist. If you call Israel racist, that is uh, under the legal definition now. That is considered racist under the Civil Rights Act itself. So it is racist to call uh, someone else racist. Very fun. You know, and people, and people, you know, called Rand Paul crazy because he wanted to repeal the Civil Rights Act. That's something that Rand Paul backed off on because it was so controversial. But it was something he originally ran on in 2010. You know, um, a lot of folks may not remember, but Pepperidge Farm remembers. Ron Paul, at least, stayed consistent on that. I believe he uh, still, probably now more than ever, uh, opposes the Civil Rights Act because this is the kind of bullshit you end up with. And so, um, in case you missed it, the, uh, the definition of anti-Semitism used for this law is not actually written in the law. Rather, they, they refer to uh, some website uh, operated by a pro-Israel lobbying group. And on this website, which can be, of course, edited by the group at any time, they list examples uh, which I've been going over here of anti-Semitism, you know, and some of those examples include, but are not limited to, uh, calling uh, or comparing Israel to Nazis, um, calling Israel racist, uh, saying that Jesus was killed by Jews. Uh, these are uh, using uh, applying double standards to Israel. All of these are anti-Semitism um, under the present definition on this website. Of course, that can be edited and changed at any point. They could add in the apartheid thing at a moment's notice. It might be it might say it on the page right now, and this video could already be out of date. And so the definition of anti-Semitism is literally whatever they want it to be. Um, and this group can edit it at any point to criminalize the speech of any American. They could put something completely unrelated to Jews in there. They could say um, uh, voting for Trump is anti-Semitic. Uh, under this law, and so therefore anyone who votes for Trump can be prosecuted under the Civil Rights Act. They could, they could do that. That is how the law is written. You know, welcome to America. And you still have these, um, uh, you know, uh, these cucked right-wingers, you know, the, um, uh, the ones who think that they're, uh, that they're super edgy and cool, you know, because they're more authoritarian, or I guess, than, uh, you know, the neocons or something, which, I mean, hey... <laughs> I wouldn't pride myself on being more authoritarian than the neocons. I mean, that's a pretty high bar uh, that you've had to clear there. But anyway, the, the, the new, uh, you know, Gen Z authoritarian right in America, they pride themselves, you know, on following laws. Uh, they're the big law and order crowd. I can't imagine uh, being so law cucked that I would bow down to Israel. It's just, it's, it's comical, really. Who knows? Maybe they'll change their stance now and they'll say, well, we're, you know, we're, we only believe in authoritarianism when it's not Jews doing it. And so if the, if it's a authoritarian law meant to protect Jews, well, then I'm against it and I'll violate that law. It's like, oh, OK, you know. So so suddenly everyone turns into a, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Wignats turn into libertarians when, uh, when, you know, when a Jew is holding the gun. I don't know. I just. Personally, I find it much easier just to say that some laws are stupid and shouldn't be followed. And so, no, I don't think that society will collapse if you cut the tag off your mattress uh, or, um, or or gut the catalytic converter on your car so that it so that it's not all plugged up with soot. And you know, so this is old news. I didn't even want to talk about this today. I wanted to get into uh, Israel's ultimatum to Hamas, uh, in which in which they've said. You better release those hostages, Hamas, uh, or else we're going to invade Rafah. But even if you turn over the hostages, we're still going to invade Rafah anyway. It's like, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it really is. I mean, I don't think Netanyahu could be any more transparent that he wants all of these so-called hostages dead if they aren't already. 
because he's made the most half-hearted attempts uh, at negotiating their release that I could ever imagine. I mean, picture this. Uh, it's, it's 1979 <clears throat> or 1980, you know, during the election season. Um, Jimmy Carter really, really wants to release the, get those hostages released so that he can beat Reagan in the election. And he says to the Ayatollah, you better let those hostages out of the embassy or else I'm just going to nuke Tehran, wipe your whole city off the map, you know. Um, sure, the hostages will be gone, but we already don't have them. So at least we'll be able to take you out with them, and we'll take out much more of your people uh, than uh, uh, you know than 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 we'll lose hostages. And at least we'll send a message then: Hey, don't take Americans hostage, or else it ends badly for you. And you might think, Wow, that's a pretty good negotiating tactic. You know, he's playing hardball. Um, you know, maybe the Ayatollah will be scared and release those hostages before the election so that, uh, you know, Jimmy Carter gets some credit and, you know, maybe he has a chance of fending off uh, Reagan and winning re-election. But then, before letting the Ayatollah respond, Jimmy Carter says, oh, and by the way, even if you do re release those hostages, I'm so mad at you, I'm going to nuke Tehran anyway. Uh, so no matter what you do... <laughs> The result of this is the same, so you, I'm giving you zero incentive to actually release the hostages into my custody. That is what Netanyahu is doing with Hamas right now. Um, it's, it, it would be quite funny if it weren't also tragic. Oh, and by the way, apparently Israel has a plan of what to do with all of the innocent civilians living in tents who were pushed out of Gaza City all the way down to Rafah. Um, uh... Netanyahu has a solution. He says, we're just going to take all the refugees in Rafa and push them somewhere else. Yes, this is Patrick logic. He wants to push the people out of Rafa into another town so that he can then uh, fight Hamas in Rafa and destroy what's left of that city. But what's going to happen as soon as they destroy Rafa? They're going to go, oh, wait. A bunch of the terrorists actually migrated with the refugees to the new tent city, you know, that we have, that we pushed them out of Rafa, you know, to build a new tent city. Uh, some of the terrorists went with them, too, so now we need to go bomb that tent city, too, because that is exactly what happened uh, with Gaza City. All these people were pushed out of Gaza City. Why? Because Israel said, well, you don't want to be here. We're going to be fighting Hamas here, so get out of the city. And so what did Israel do? The, you know, the people got out. Israel leveled the city. Uh, there's no buildings left, like 80% of the buildings all gone. Everybody's houses is destroyed. And then what did Israel say? Oh, gee, it looks like Hamas was hiding amongst the refugees that headed south. And so well, all these people that we killed in in Gaza, there's there's still more soldiers down in Rafa. So now we got to go blow up Rafa. It's like, well, what's going to happen when you supposedly push the refugees out of Rafa, uh, you know, to a new tent city? Have them all pick up their, their, their tents that they live in now. Um, and have them move into a different desert. There is no end to any of this. So, with that said, uh, I will see you folks back here in the next one.